morning and welcome to Open Your Eyes. Start your morning right. I'm Marlene Cuellar. And I'm Gavin Courtney. And thank you for joining us this morning. It's a pretty cool morning this morning. Right. <laughs> a little bit of drizzle. Yeah, I know. As um, soon, luckily, as soon as we arrived, that yeah, was, we were talking about that a little bit. It's like a little bit of a blessing as you get your day started. Um, still a bit cool, not as, as, as chilly as it was yesterday, but... Um, you know, when we see the rain, we think that's the end of the cold front. Um, and while it probably is based on what the, the weather people say, but it's still nice and comfortable. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And so I'm sure that if you're watching from bed right now or, you know, in oh. your house, at least if you have a nice blanket, you're probably enjoying the best of the last bit of this weather that we're going to have for the next few days. Yeah, Valentine's Day is over. It's time to uh, get out of bed and get your day started. Yeah, no, although <laughs> I was going to I was going to say that this uh, the 15th is, is all could also be another day. <laughs> really? Yeah. How so? W what is the 15th, Gavin? Please educate is me. It's after Valentine's Day. It's an after after Valentine, what do you do after Valentine's Day? Well, I don't know. Because oh. I, I, this is just stuff that I've heard. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I, I won't even dive into that mm -hmm. one this morning because there are a lot of people out there who want a nice calm start to their day. Right. But uh, we do hope that you had a lovely Valentine's Day. Um, showered with love and appreciation. Uh, it's so great to see uh, some of the stories I've been seeing people sharing from the end of last week, really. Um, of just the extra bit of care uh, that was shown to them and appreciation that was shown to them over the weekend. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, and even if it's just, uh, I remember um, going around like last week, um, Friday especially, and yesterday, you know, people wearing their red and their pink. Yeah. And I also thought it was nice to see people um, walking down the street. I saw, you know, a lot of guys, you know, um, seem to be like on their way home with flowers or some yeah. other gifts and stuff. So, you know, it is always a nice reminder, as you said. It was interesting. I was at the supermarket. And I was looking at the amount of people getting balloons oh, yeah. uh, over the weekend and picking up roses. It's, you know, I, I get that there are a lot of people out there who uh, perhaps have tired of uh, thinking of spending on Valentine's Day. And it really doesn't matter what you spend. I think it's the gesture and the thought that goes into it. Just one day where somebody says to you, you know, I am happy to have you in my life. And even the kids get involved. You remember when you used to have to make Valentine's Day cards? Oh, yeah. Yeah, and choose who you're going to give it to? Yeah, for sure. And, mm -hmm. you know, uh, so it's definitely nice to show somebody um, it's special. It doesn't even necessarily have to be, you know, a romantic partner. Yeah, but, yeah. you know, that you, that you love them and that you're thinking about them and you just wanted to make a little bit of an extra effort for them. So, you know, Valentine's Day, uh, we hope you had a good one. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, of course, that was the celebratory mood yesterday, but uh, it was also um, on a national level uh, the start of the three days of mourning for former Prime Minister, Right Honorable um, Manuel Esquivel, um, who uh, passed away last week, and uh, today actually is the first day of the state funeral. Yes, and um, so the, today the... Um, State Memorial Service is going to be commencing at uh, 2 p.m. this afternoon, mm -hmm. and uh, that is to commemorate his life and his contributions to Belize. Of course, he did serve two terms as Prime Minister, and um, he was Belize's second Prime Minister, so um, the Right Honorable um, Esquivel is, uh, well, as Marlene said, today is going to be the first day yeah. of the three days. Yeah, so um, it will be televised, uh, so you can be able to catch it on all the different media houses. And it will also be streaming on Facebook if you want that convenience from your office or on your phone while you're mobile. Uh, it's a great opportunity. I think um, one of the things we spoke yesterday with Amory Williams, who, woke, who worked with him in his Caribbean Shores constituency um, during his campaign. And it was a really good reminder, I think, to, to recognize that there are some young adults in our community who never experienced um, mm, him true. as a prime minister. And so he is uh, uh, just a part of the history books for them. So being able to share the stories and hear of his life and contributions um, and what he represented as a leader uh, is really an important lesson. So we do encourage you to tune in um, so that you can be able to uh, pay your respects as well. Uh, the procession starts this afternoon um, just so people know, if you want to come out and watch or if you need to know about parking especially, um, that entire area has been blocked off. You're talking Queen Street, Albert Street, 
um, because the procession will go from his home on Daly Street uh, over the bridge and then uh, onto House of Culture where he will, the urn will lie in state um, for, uh, I believe it's a few hours. I can't remember exactly, yeah. Yes. And um, of course, as Marlene said, it is going to be televised and uh, you'll be able to watch that right here on Channel 5. Um, and otherwise, uh, tributes have been pouring in for the um, former Prime Minister. We saw um, the Honorable John Brisenio, um give his own tribute as well. And of course, several members of the United Democratic Party, including uh, former Prime Minister, uh, Right Honorable Dean Barrow, and, um, several of, and the current leader of the opposition, Shine Barrow as well. Yeah. Um, offered his own uh, words of uh, thought for uh, um, uh, the Prime Minister Esquivel's passing. That's right. That's and in, right. It is interesting that you know you you did bring up that um, a lot of people, uh, especially young adults, yeah. won't have um, experienced him at all yeah. as Prime Minister, and um, it's 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 important. And you know, and I thought um, as you know, some of those tributes were pouring in. How important it is for us, you know, take stock of our history yeah. and make sure that. Um, you know, people do remember um, such important contributions um, by people like, you know, Prime Minister Esquivel. Yeah, you know, the thing is, and it's interesting because we, we had a conversation yesterday about curriculum reform. We didn't dive too deep into how some of the individual um, subject areas would be adjusted. But if you look back, I, I remember portions of, of him as Prime Minister. Um, a big part of that is that, you know, like most Belizeans, the family tradition was that you watch news at the end of the day. And so I do remember some of uh, the key moments from his leadership. But, uh, you know, when you go back to the history books, it's, there's a lot of information about uh, Belize coming to independence, which gives you a lot more insight into um, the late father of the nation, George Price. And then you just kind of have like who was the subsequent uh, prime ministers after mm -hmm. that, but not so much who they were what they represented, or anything about their biography, about um, how they came to be leaders, or their background. I think the, the interesting part that people um, have kind of clung to is uh, how the late Right Honorable uh, Manuel Esquivel uh, was a scientist. Yes. You know, he, he was, uh, and, and it seems to speak so much to his style of leadership, because science is very fact-based. It, it's, it's, um, I know a lot of people tend to see it as devoid of emotion, mm -hmm. um, but it does, for me, I think, in, in looking at it, lend to why um, he was portrayed as someone who is just very pragmatic in his approach to addressing uh, national issues. Absolutely, and um, several people have been s mentioning um, things like that in his, in his tributes, in mm -hmm. seeing just how different he was from other politicians. Yeah. And um, I believe, you know, when we were looking uh, back on our, uh, you know, retrospective, looking back at some of, the, uh, look at some of his career, um, you know, his own words, he did say that um, he wasn't a very good politician mm -hmm. and that he didn't believe in propaganda, which, yeah. you know, um, is a very important part of, of, of politics if you think about it, you know. Yeah. And, that's in every, and that's in every given country. You know, he, uh, you know, dealt with facts, he dealt with um, objectivity, yeah. um, took tough decisions when he yeah. felt it was necessary. And, of course, um, one of the most significant things that people do like to point out as well from his legacy is that when he did serve his first term, it was the first time that a different party had, had, had really served um, since self-government, since mm -hmm. independence. And, um, you know, if, if you look back in your history, you'll see what a significant achievement that was. So um, it's yeah. definitely uh, going to, it's a big, you know, definitely why he's, he's remembered as much as he, he um, is. Yeah, absolutely. And of course, you'll be able to learn more um, about him during the next two days. As we said, the uh, coverage of the state funeral starts this afternoon and also tomorrow for the official uh, memorial. We're told uh, that he doesn't want any service, so it's going to be primarily music as his send off. And then, of course, all the uh, bells and whistles and, and uh, ceremonial things that take place at a state funeral, including the 21-gun salute, um, the firing of the cannons, and, and you can look forward to that. I was commenting this morning, actually, that um, the last state funeral, which was just about a year ago uh, for the former governor general, um, Damienita Gordon, uh, this was very similar to the weather we had back mm. then as well um, as she made her procession through the streets. So. 
It kind of sets, it sets the mood um, for morning. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah I can see that. Um, but hopefully, um, you know, it's, it was drizzling just a, a few minutes ago, yeah. so maybe we'll clear up a little bit so people can be able to go out and show their support and, and you know, um, but we'll see how that plays out throughout the rest of the day. Yes. All right. But, um, you know, that's just a bit of what is happening at the moment. And, uh, of course, there were some uh, major stories last night when it came to crime. But we will be talking to Commissioner Williams in our show, so we'll be able to tackle some of those uh, in our subsequent conversations. So let's shift gears uh, to Eye on the News and get you some motivation to start your day. So our eye opener for today, uh, taken from dailyom.com, goes like this. Dealing with feelings honestly as they arise will avoid a buildup and control a lashing out down the road. Intense emotions demand intense modes of expression. While there are many outlets for the feelings typically deemed positive, however, there are far fewer methods for constructively coping with anger, frustration, fear, sadness, or stress. Consequently, such feelings can cause us to believe that we are no longer in, our, in control of our emotional state. Backed into a mental corner, we may lash out at the first individual we encounter. Powerful emotions are like the lava in a volcano, poised to erupt. Channeling your emotions into constructive action can also prevent you from engaging in cyclical rumination in which you repeatedly relive the situation, event, or expectation that originally sparked your feelings in your mind's eye. Since you are focused on a goal, even if your ambition is merely to better understand yourself, your pain is no longer being fed by your intellectual and emotional energy and quickly ebbs away. You not only avoid lashing out at others, but you also actively take part in your own healing process while honestly acknowledging and honoring your feelings. Uh, I like that eye opener a lot. Um, I like the metaphor that they talk about um, emotions being like lava in a volcano. Mm -hmm. And um, it's definitely true that I, I like it because it's true because it, it, it just drives home the point that when you build that when they do build up mm -hmm. too much then you know when it there is finally or at least it's like an explosion so um if you know you know you have certain volcanoes which which are like that you know they lay dormant for you know centuries of and then they throw and then they come up with this big huge um, explosion and you have the others which have um you know sort of the slow um the slow flowing lava mm -hmm. Um, and uh, those are the ones explosive. which are more, yeah, exactly. They're not explosives and those yeah. are the ones which, which, you know, people can go up to. And if you think about that as a metaphor, you know, as to your own emotions, and it's very similar because if you do deal with them, um, and you try to express them as they come out, um, even if they are difficult, yeah. um, then of course it makes dealing with the situation a lot easier when you just think about how much damage a, a, a volcanic e eruption can cause. Absolutely. Um, it, it's, a great, but it's a great metaphor and I think it's one to keep uh, thinking about when you um, think about maybe trying to bottle up your emotions too yeah. much. You know, I, I feel that um, going beyond just, just the emotion of anger, I think there's a lot of emotional work that needs to be done um, with us. Uh, I don't think we are, it's changing. You, you kind of hear um, parents now teaching children to name their emotions and, yeah. you know, um, what are you feeling and, and helping them to recognize that it is okay to have those emotions that we have called bad for so long. Um, being able to confront issues as they arise rather than having them pen, pent up, build up, I should say, um, and then exploding at, at, in a violent nature. We're going to be talking about crime um, very soon. And I know that one of the things that, that uh, we are very aware of is that there are feelings of um, anger. There's feelings of resentment that builds up within communities. And we see it playing out in a very violent manner. Um, and that's why I say if we go back to looking at what we're teaching our children about how to handle these emotions, that can be really overwhelming. Because anger especially, or hurt, mm -hmm is really overwhelming and we don't learn what to do with them we just learn to like quiet them put them aside but it builds up inside like that volcano and unfortunately 
you do then see it in uh, ways that can be violent or ways that are very hurtful. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, um, you know, when it comes to, you are right w when you describe it, sort of just how to, the work that needs to be done in teaching how to deal with those emotions. Because experiencing anger or frustration or things like this is just a part of life. Mm -hmm. um, but your response to that is really how, uh, you know, what is, needs to be worked on. Yeah. And um, in a lot of uh, times, many people aren't really taught how to deal with those emotions properly or constructively. Yeah. And that's why we see, you know, a lot of the results that, that um, are playing out in our society and it mm -hmm. comes in various different ways you know yeah. um, crime is definitely one of the ones w which is most obvious mm -hmm. but um, it does come it manifests in several different ways so the Im important thing is to try to process the hows and the whys and you know eventually how to deal with um, those emotions that's right so that's our motivation for this morning and now we're going to be finding out about or whether we have Derek Redon on the line good morning Good morning. How are you today? I'm doing good, thank you. All right. I, I don't know if it's tired or cozy that I'm hearing in your voice. <laughs> you trying to stay warm? Uh, well, I am. I am staying warm. <laughs> with my throat just a little. Okay. All right. So tell us what we can expect for today. <clears throat> okay. Today we can expect cloudy to overcast skies and cool conditions. Mm -hmm. uh, some showers or light rain will affect most areas, but especially the coast. And then for tonight, we can expect cloudy skies with some showers over central and northern areas. All right. What about our winds? Okay. Winds will be from the northeast. Um, north, northwest this morning, then become northeast this afternoon at 10 to 20 knots with occasional higher gusts. Seas moderate, becoming rough at times, and we have a small craft caution today. Mm -hmm. And our temperatures for today? Okay, highs today will only reach 77 along the coast, mm -hmm. 81 inland and 68 up in the mountains. The lows for tonight, 74 along the coast, 68 inland, 61 up in the mountains. All right, and what's the extended forecast? Uh, how long does the cool weather stick around? Okay, only for today. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we can expect tomorrow partly cloudy skies, a few cloudy spells with a few showers over the north in the morning, but becoming isolated by afternoon and elsewhere showers will be isolated. And that continues on Thursday and Friday, mainly fair, with the chance of isolated showers. All right. Well, thank you so much for that update. You're welcome. Have a great day. Same to you. All right. Bye-bye. So this is the last of the cool weather. Yeah. Yeah, but so enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> it came in just for your Valentine's Day. That's so true. Uh, there you go. Enjoy the last of it. And then we're back to uh, better weather as we move forward. But we got to get moving into our show. Yes. And as we said before the break, uh, we've got a lot of interesting conversations lined up. And our first conversation um, is going to be with the Commissioner of Police. And we're going to be looking at the crime situation in Belize. Uh, and so that's going to be the first uh, segment this All morning. Right. And the second part of the show, just because Valentine's Day is over, doesn't mean uh, that you stop sharing the love. Digi's coming on. They're going to be telling us about their February promotions that you can take advantage of. And finally, we are going to be learning a little bit about cybersecurity. And we're going to be getting an update from Get Safe Online, which is a UK resource that talks about um, online safety mm. and uh, that's going to be our last conversation for this morning and then I'm going to be closing off our show with some trending social media topics because it is trending Tuesdays. That's right but we got to take a break and before we do we got a birthday shout out today and we are saying happy sixth birthday to Cameron Guerra. Aww. and uh, that birthday wish comes from your mom dad and your two brothers so uh, Cameron, we hope you have a happy birthday. So from all of us at Open Your Eyes on Channel 5, happy, happy birthday, and we wish you many more. Um, hope you have some nice cake today. Yeah, I was going <laughs> to tell you, tell mom and dad you deserve all the cake and ice cream that you ask for. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we're going to take that break. When we come back, we will be talking about the situation of crime in the country with Commissioner Williams. So please, stay tuned. In these trying times, Smart is here to lessen the burden.
Smarts reduce roaming rates save you while traveling. Calls back home are a low 35 cents per minute when visiting Canada, the U.S., and Mexico, or pay as low as 50 cents for calls when visiting countries in the Caribbean, Central, and South America. For the month of February and March, enjoy an unbelievable low rate of 30 cents per megabyte when roaming with mobile data in Canada, the U.S., Mexico, Central America, and the Caribbean. Whether you are a business traveler, studying abroad, visiting loved ones, or just traveling for pleasure, Smart's new roaming rates have got you covered. Roaming in China, Europe, Central America, South America, and the Caribbean is as low as the cost of making a local call. It's that low. Smart's roaming coverage continues to grow. So you can also enjoy affordable roaming rates in several destinations across the globe. For more information on rates to other countries, visit our website or call 1090 for more details before you travel. Smart, bringing people together. It's almost lunchtime and Alice is getting hungry and forgot to bring cash. She remembers that eCash now has a geolocation feature in which she can easily view the eCash merchants near her, especially restaurants. Her co-workers also ask her to order food for them. Chicken chow mein, please, and a Coke. The merchant sends her the payment link. She taps confirm, and within a few minutes, her food is delivered. Alice then views her transaction history and taps on the transaction recently made, then taps the split the bill button where she selects the unevenly option and moves the bar to the desired amount per person. The request is then sent to her friends. Her colleagues accept the request and are ready to enjoy their meals. Geolocation and splitting the bill via eCash make Alice's life a whole lot easier. Connecting people. Creating memories. Hey guys, so here we are at the Glaze of Kitchen. I just prepared this amazing broccoli. Sharing a smile. Next Gen, the ultimate digital experience. for low-cost television advertising have we got a deal for you advertise on channel 5's daily classifieds channel 5's daily classifieds is one of the most effective methods for introducing yourself and your business to the community use our daily classifieds to recruit employees promote specials promote your products or services promote a business opportunity increase traffic to your website advertise items you have for sale. Let us help you save valuable time and money. Call us today at 223-0146 or visit us at our offices on Pony Drive to discuss how we can help your business grow affordably. Channel 5's Daily Classifieds. Advertise today. Whether you're And we're back. And if you're joining us right now, we are just getting our first conversation for this morning started. And as we mentioned before the break, we are now joined in our studio by uh, the Commissioner of Police, uh, Chester Williams. And we're going to be getting an update from the Belize Police Department, as well as uh, talk a little bit about the crime situation as we get a start uh, to the year. Uh, good morning, Commissioner. Good morning, Gavin. Mm -hmm. Good morning, Marlene. And good morning to your viewers and listeners across the country, mm -hmm. and even those who may be tuning in um, from abroad. And uh, thank you for joining us. We always appreciate uh, you coming in uh, to uh, discuss uh, the crime situation uh, with us. Now, as we are s still pretty much in the beginning of 2022, um, a lot of people uh, are a bit anxious uh, based on the current crime situation. But in your evaluation, you know, in a nutshell, 
Um, how, does this, how does the beginning of this year compare to other years? Um, thanks for giving me the opportunity to be here. Um, I, it is always a pleasure for me to speak to the media. And uh, it is not because I love the media, but <laughs> I believe that this is the medium by which I hold myself accountable to the public. And uh, dialogue with the citizenry so that they can know exactly what it is that we're doing to be able to make them safe. And so, yes, as you said, um, the year started not the way we would have wanted it to start. But I can still say that um, it started better than many years before. I think that um, if we were to go back a couple of years, we would see that one of the best years we have had, other than this year, would have been last year. Last year, January, we had only six murders, which I can tell you is one of the best year, one of the best start we've had. And this year we had 13. But even though we had 13 this year, if we compare that to previous years, you would see that it is still better than many of the previous years. For some reason, um, historically, January have been one of the most deadliest months um, in our country. We have January, May, June. Those are the historically most deadliest months. And so um, while we do have 13, I still think that it is a good start. And uh, we're trying to see how or what we can do to ensure that moving forward, we reduce the numbers. And so far, the month of February is not bad um, compared to previous years as well. But we're not going to be singing no, no song and celebrating because February is still still have a couple of days more to go. And uh, at the end of the day, for people, one, la one life last is one life too much. Yeah. And so we, we always try our best to see how best we can avert any murder at all from happening. But we all know that that is impossible to do. Um, the propensity for young people have changed. They have become so violent. And I love the discussion I heard you and Marlene had earlier um, before, before I came on discussing the whole issue for young people and uh, the society and what needs to be done because oftentimes people believe that fighting crime is a sole police issue but in fact it goes way beyond the police it must have the different stakeholders and i'm happy to say that um, through the effort of our minister and uh, other members of cabinet we now have a task force which combines the different ministries we have human development, we have Ministry of Sports, we have Ministry of Youth, we have Ministry of Infrastructure, Home Affairs, Defense. So we have a task force now um, that we have put together to look at the whole issue of crime from every angle where government is, in, is concerned. But we still need to look beyond government because several of the things that occurs um, is outside the scope of government work. And so we're, we are trying to see again how best we can get the community involved in what we're doing because we believe that if we have that combination with us and the community, we will, get, we, we will certainly get better results. And so that is what we're trying to work on now. Yeah. Let's, let's take a moment to put into stock uh, before we move into 2022 what we saw last year. Um, the Belize Crime Observatory statistics show that there was actually an increase in the total number of murders in 2021 versus 2020. Um, and I know we always talk about the fact that I don't like going by monthly or weekly murder statistics. We need to look at what the murder rate is in this country. And we still, no matter if we're looking at a good year or a bad year, have one of the highest murder rates per capita based on the population size that we have. Let me just hear from your perspective. You've been at the helm for quite a while. How do you respond that this is a failure on the systems that we have in place, the entire criminal justice system? Um, I won't necessarily say so. Yes, certainly. I would wish to see that we have a system where persons who violate the law are held accountable. Um, yes, the system is, is structured in such a way, but oftentimes we don't get the results that we would want to see. 
And in any society, even at home, if you have a system where a child does something wrong and the child is not punished and punished swiftly, then the chances of that child repeating what he or she may have done increases. Mm -hmm. But where the child is punished and swiftly, more than likely the child is not going to do it again. And the other siblings who are in the house will see that the child was punished. And they too may not do what the child may have done. And so it's the same, it's the same policy or, 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 or thing in terms of the society. When criminals see that other criminals get away with certain things. You're talking about conviction rate. Yes, uh, conviction rate and even investigation because the, the conviction rate depends on certain factors. And I've always said that um, many times people equate the conviction rate or the low conviction rate to the ineffectiveness of the police or the ineffectiveness of the court system. But in fact, many a times it is not that. It is more that the society are not cooperating. Because as I've said in previous um, interviews, you could have the best investigation, you could have the best case file with all the evidence in it. But if that witness who gave those statements and uh, have a role to play with the admissibility of those evidence in court, they no case file, um, do not show up at court. They no case file is worth nothing. Because at the end of the day, a police investigation is only as good as the witnesses who participate in it. Mm -hmm. And a good prosecution is only as good as the witnesses who come and give evidence before the court. So this is, this is an entire cycle. And I, and I want to I wanna push further on this one because I've, I've heard you speak of this before, that the police does the work, gather the, the information from the witnesses. Um, there is usually a long time before it actually gets to court. By that time, m many times, witnesses choose not to participate for some reason or the other. Then you don't have a conviction. You're saying that because criminals that you've identified are not facing consequences for the crimes that they've committed, it only allows for them to continue or for more persons to be so roped in because they feel that yes. there'll be no consequence. Yes. So given the cycle that I just explained, what is the intervention to be planned to be able to stop this? Because we've been hearing this as a, as a concern <clears throat> for quite some time. Well, Marlene, there are several things that we need to look at. Um, and most importantly, we have to be real and we have to be fair. Mm -hmm. um, and we have to do an analysis to see what is the reason why the society, people, are not cooperating with the justice system. And uh, one of the main reasons that we have heard is that people fear their lives. Yeah. They fear that if they were to give a statement to the police on a crime that they may have witnessed, that they can become a victim. And that sense of feeling is real. Mm -hmm. um, we have seen it played out many times. And so what is being done again, and um, I must commend our minister and the, the Attorney General for pushing for the witness anonymity bill mm -hmm. to go through. Um, it was introduced in the House last Friday, mm -hmm. and um, I'm hoping that pretty soon it will go through the stages and become law. Because what that bill is going to do is, well, it is not what we want exactly. It's, it's a, not a witness it's a protection bill. Yes, mm -hmm. it's an anonymity bill. Mm -hmm. um, it is not exactly what we want, but it is a start. Mm -hmm. um, it will allow the prosecution to, when disclosing um, statements to the defense, the prosecution can apply to the magistrate to remove or to blot out any information on that statements on that statement that may be able to identify who the witness is mm -hmm. so that the witness name the witness age the witness address where the witness work all of those things will remove any identifiers yes, will be removed from the statement it will also provide the prosecution to make application to the court for a trial to be done via zoom mm -hmm. or for the witness to testify from behind a screen or a wall mm -hmm. again that will help to some extent to remove you that fear. You don't sound completely confident that this will work. And, and I am here skeptically thinking 
Lisa is too small. If I say I saw Johnny next door do something, everybody know I live next door to Johnny. Yes, and like I, like I said, Marlene, it is not exactly what we want, but it is a start. Um, myself and uh, my minister were also in dialogue with the U.S. Embassy, and we're trying to see how we can um, implement some witness protection program, which might be a little stronger than the witness anonymity issue. And if that materializes, then it will certainly help us even more. And what we're looking at is perhaps a witness village, where you create an, um, like a village, like a gated community. It is manned by police. Every witness who is, every person who is a witness in a major offense or crime, or who fear his or her life, can go at that witness village and stay there. And they're, man, they're taken care of by the state. And we're asking the embassy to see if they can perhaps finance it for the first two years mm -hmm. for us because it will come at a cost. Mm -hmm. the, if you are a working person, you are no longer employed, you are in this um, area, you have to be taken care of along with your family. Mm -hmm. So if that were to materialize, it certainly will help. And then the issue will then be how long does the person stay there? Mm -hmm. After the case has been heard, the person already gave the evidence, what become of that person? Or how long does it take them to get to court? Exactly. What's so, the average length of time before a matter gets heard? Um, I would say 18 months to, to 24 months for the most part. But if we were to have a system like this, certainly there's going to be a need to accelerate trials. Mm -hmm. Right, because at the end of the day, we don't want to keep people there too long, and the longer we keep people there, the more disgusting mm -hmm. the government. So it is something that if the embassy agree to finance for us, that we'll have to go into more discussion with other stakeholders like the DPP, the Attorney General, and see how we'll be able to to tweak it to work for exactly um, to tweak it to work exactly how we want it to work. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, yeah. oh, well, I was going to ask, you know, on on. You know, we're looking at the problems with the, you know, institutions, let's say. But um, in your assessment, um, you mentioned something earlier about the, the propensity of, young pe of, of people in society changing. Um, so when we look at figures, perhaps for the last two years, what, what are the driving factors behind crime? And perhaps, what, and what are some of the difficulties that uh, the police have encountered in sort of doing their work, investigations, inv investigation-wise and, and otherwise when it comes to gathering evidence and, you know, you know with the hope of, you know, securing convictions? <coughs> um, certainly, I can tell you that last year, gang-related murders were done mm -hmm. compared to many other years. I think that 2019 and, no, 2020 and 2021, we have had the lowest number of gang-related murders. And uh, we continue to see a trend in terms of domestic violence murders. Um, and when I say domestic, in a domestic setting, it does not necessarily mean husband and wife or Kamala and Kamala, but mm -hmm. even brothers and brothers, right? Son and father. <coughs> so, yeah. Father and son. Um, so we, we have seen an increase in um, domestic murders. We have also seen murders committed um, like in the commission of a crime, mm -hmm. robbery, um, as the case may be. And then we have also had drug-related drug -related murders. So those are the, 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 the three main um, motives we have, seen, we have seen for these murders. And again, this year, we're seeing again that Belize City which is normally the, the hub for the gang-related murders, is not up there because the program that we currently have is working to some extent. Every area um, in the city that is a part of the program, we are seeing that, uh, that the crime have gone down tremendously, including the, sh the shootings like the St. Martin's area, the Banak area, because those were the two areas that were flaring up last year. And now we're seeing that those areas are down. Now we're seeing areas like the extension area and the Jane Osha Boulevard area are picking up. And so what we're doing now is to see how we can go into those areas and try to extend the program mm -hmm. into, the, into um, those areas. But the greatest impediment we have, um, Gavin, is the fact that witnesses do not cooperate mm -hmm. um, with investigation. And uh, if it is that witnesses do not cooperate, then our ability to solve those crimes reduces tremendously. Mm -hmm. Now, I can tell you we have a number of CTVs cameras across the country 
across the city rather. And in Belize City, those cameras have helped us to be able to solve crime. Likewise, we have also been able to get cameras from different establishments or homes that may um, have cameras erected and the, the cameras might have picked up a crime. When that happened, we go, because the law provide, um, authorize us to go and retrieve those um, footages, mm -hmm. and then it helps us to solve crime as well. So, if the crime is committed within the view of a camera, then certainly our ability to solve that crime increases. But when it occurs away from the view of cameras, and then witnesses do not cooperate with us, then the solvability rate becomes um, much lower. I, mm -hmm. I wanted to come back to that, though, because the statistics show that there were 125 murders last year. Last year, year yes. There were only 46 arrests made, mm -hmm. less than 50%. Yes. And it goes back to what I say, Marlene, that the, the fact that people will tell you, yes, I saw this one committing the, the, the crime, but to reduce that in writing, they're not going to do it. Mm -hmm. And that is the issue we, we're having. Do you think that there's any, well that you can attribute that in any way to perhaps a perception or maybe a lack of trust that on the part of the public with the police itself? I think the main issue is the witnesses don't feel safe. Mm -hmm. They believe that um, when the statement is disclosed to the defense, their names will be revealed and then they become a target. So that is the, the, the main reasons why they don't cooperate. Yes, there, to some extent there is a trust issue with the police, but the greatest reasons we get from witnesses is that now, when the time comes, their name will be revealed. L let me start this off by saying I have absolutely no investigative training, but I want to ask this question. Is there not a way to build a case around the information provided by the witness to be able to secure the arrest? Um, and is that perhaps an, a weakness that exists? No, because the way how the Constitution is structured is that you have a right to meet your accuser. Mm -hmm. So every person who gives statement against you, you have a right to cross-examine them. Mm -hmm. And so, yes, even though you might tell the police that Gavin do it, just you telling the police Gavin did it is not sufficient. Unless there, there are other factors that can prove that Gavin did it without your statement. Mm -hmm. But if it is only dependent on your statement to inform the court in evidence that he did it, then the court cannot convict. It is what we refer to as hearsay, and it does not meet the exception to the hearsay mm. rule. Now, Commissioner, coming back to, to, to the issue that we've been talking about with um, the amount of crime that we see in the country, I know very often you've been talking of uh, the reductions we saw in 2020, and although there was a slight increase in 2021, it doesn't compare to 2019. I, I think there's a general feeling that the analysis for these three years that were in 2020 to 2022 are different because the circumstances that we're living in are different. Um, so I know you'll argue that, that it isn't all about the curfew, but people will believe that no matter what. We're living in different circumstances. And that's where I wanted to bring the question. We are now entering our third year with the curfew. And people are saying that it is only a matter of, it is only a tool being used to mitigate crime more so than mitigate COVID. Well, let me say to them, um, let's, I'll take you to Jamaica. Throughout 2021, Jamaica have had extremely strict curfew measures. When we were having curfew at 10 p.m. or 12 a.m., Jamaica was having curfew at 6 p.m., mm -hmm. in some cases 5 p.m., and in some cases lockdown on weekends. Mm -hmm. we, have, we did not have that throughout 2021. Oh. And despite the stricter curfew measures in Jamaica, Jamaica murder went up last year by 18%. Mm -hmm. And I leave my case there to show that um, it is not a matter of curfew because when the criminals want to commit crime, they're going to commit it before the curfew mm -hmm. kicks in. And uh, even so, at times, they still find a way to maneuver the police during curfew hours to go and commit the crime. So we have to be fair and give credit where credit is due. You that the effort of the police certainly um, is the greatest factor in the reduction that we saw last year. Now, well, I mean, would you, uh, let, let me counter that. I mean, the only way we will know that for sure is when there is no curfew in place. 
Well, we have had many years with no curfew, and um, 2019, we, mm -hmm. we hardly had any curfew, mm -hmm. um, and even before that. So it is always going to be something that people will see, mm -hmm. right? But at the end of the day, I certainly believe that the police efforts have a lot to do with the reduction. And uh, if it is that the government decides to lift the curfew, Yes, certainly we have to do more. Um, I've said to officers that currently we know curfew is at 10 or at 12, and uh, we work until then mm -hmm. as much as we can. And when the curfew will kick in, you can decide to take a little step back. If the curfew is lift, lifted, then certainly we have to give that effort um, right throughout the night because we, we certainly know that the criminals will be moving around. And so we are prepared um, if the curfew is to remove. I have heard people um, clamoring What's for your it. position? I don't have an issue with the curfew being removed. Um, certainly people do have the right of freedom of movement across this country. And uh, if it is that the government decide that they want to remove it, I, I would welcome it. If they decide they want to keep it, I welcome that as well. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter me. So we've been talking a lot about uh, what happens after the crime has taken place. But of course, the work of the police department also includes preventative measures. Yes. Let's talk about strategies there. Um, you know I challenge you a lot of times to talk strategy. Mm -hmm. Tell me what is planned um, to be able to address from the prevention standpoint. What new? Because... Again, what are they, the greatest... Um, efforts we're pushing right now is, um, as I said before, the multi-agency approach mm -hmm. um, that is being spearheaded by the Ministry of Home Affairs and uh, the Ministry of Youth and Sports. Mm -hmm. And uh, that multi-agency approach also have embedded in it uh, an intervention aspect. And uh, what the, the in interventionists would do is to go out on the streets and uh, um, talk to these young men and try to see what they can do to help them to overcome their issues. Also, a part of that um, strategy is to see how we can now incorporate sports. The fact that the country is opening to sports, um, we want to go back to do intervention through sports. And uh, again, we're also looking at the at-risk youths, because as, uh, as we discussed um, last week, we're focusing too much on those guys who, who, are, who are already mm -hmm. a part of the problem. And uh, we believe that our main focus should be now on the next generation to ensure that they do not become these guys when these guys decide to move on. Mm -hmm. And so we are now looking at um, programs for the younger um, generation. And we want to go back to the mentorship program that we had. Mm -hmm. um, you were a part of that. Mm -hmm. um, we are hoping to start that back again this year to see how we can bring the younger people in and uh, um, find productive things for them to do. Likewise, we're also looking at um, entrepreneurship, training them to do a trade or something so that they can become self-sustenance. They don't have to go somewhere and look for a job. They can learn um, mechanic, perhaps electrical, yeah. Um, perhaps craft, um, crafting, different things that they can um, do to sustain themselves. And then we also have the issue from the police standpoint where we're trying to do more intelligence-led operations. Um, we know who the criminals are. We know where they live. Um, the only issue is that sometimes people that you and I would not suspect are involved, are involved in hiding guns and hiding drugs for these people. And mm -hmm. so that is where challenges com comes in because the known gangman or the known drug dealer will not keep the drugs or the gun at their home. Mm -hmm. They have other people who are of influence that they would use to hide their tools of trade for them. And so we, we have to find a way to penetrate those organizations and identify those persons who are aiding them in the concealment of their weapons and, mm -hmm. um, and drugs. And then we have the preventative patrols that we do on a daily basis. I will try to do that again. Um, targeted, mm -hmm. looking at crime analysis to see where the hotspots are and mm -hmm. ensure that we maintain our presence in those hotspots. Now, yes, we're not going to just focus on the hotspots and neglect the other areas. We still have to ensure that we cover the other areas because if it is that we're too um, 
too much in one area and the criminal do not find a chance to commit the crime there, then the balloon effect mm -hmm. um, kicks in where they go elsewhere. Like so, the state of emergency. Exactly. Yeah. yeah so um, we, we are trying our best not to go back to the state of emergency. But if there is a need to do it, then certainly we're going to do it. Let, let, me, let me just ask a, a question about who creates or who's involved in the creation of the crime prevention strategies. Because, Commissioner, I, I heard uh, yesterday in the news where you spoke about basketball. I have visions of the previous basketball tournaments on the Sprite at, at, yes. at uh, uh, City Center. We talk about entrepreneurship. There's been an apprenticeship program before. Um, we talked about community policing. There's a lovely center, uh, multiple centers, uh, and, and we've seen police officers on the streets. But what we haven't seen is the effect of these actions. So my question is, Who's sitting together to come up with the strategy and how do you create new ways or look at examples that are working in other parts of the world that may be replicated here? Um, Marlene, who creates a strategy? The strategy is normally from the Commissioner of Police. Yes. And uh, I would discuss it my senior command mm -hmm. and then we come together and we put together the crime fighting strategy. And I can tell you that in so doing, we looked at other countries around us and across the world to see what they're doing. Mm -hmm. And what we're doing is in Belize is pretty much the same as what has been done in many countries across the world, because it is like replicating what they're doing. But the difference is the behavior of our people. Um, if you were to go to, um, I just came from Colombia. Yes. I went to Costa Rica. I, I went to New Orleans. I went to Boston, I went to, um, to um, London, mm -hmm. and uh, pretty much what we are doing in Belize is what those countries are doing. But it doesn't work for us, it not the way we want to see the results. It does not work for us the way how we want to, because and it has a lot to do with the behavior of our people. Remember, at the end of the day, the police can only do so much. The police don't have the ability to, to be watching every citizen and regulate their behavior. Mm -hmm. And so having healthy discussions in the home with parents and children, mm -hmm. with girlfriend and boyfriend, can be of tremendous help. Because everybody depends that or believe that the police must stop our crime. It cannot happen. Well, that's why I asked about who puts together the strategy. Because from the outside looking in, and you can always correct me if I'm wrong, the Ministry of Human Development has a stake. Mm -hmm. because uh, some of these children are going out or they're being recruited because they don't have mm -hmm. visible or present parents mm -hmm. um, or they're not going to school. Ministry of Education with truancy is another. Mm -hmm. There's some schools that can't get their full yes. um, uh, uh, group of students back to school. Ministry of Health mm -hmm. with mental health issues mm -hmm. that children may be facing after seeing loved one after loved mm -hmm. one after loved yes. one die in mm -hmm. front of them on a regular mm -hmm. basis. So when do all these agencies come together to create or replicate or innovate in a new strategy for crime prevention? We have that, Maria, and that's what I said earlier, the multi-agency um, approach that we're dealing with from the different um, ministries of government or departments of government. And we have also put together a strategy for that that encompasses all that you have just spoken about. Mm -hmm. And that is what we're doing in Belize City now. We have started in Belize City. Mm -hmm. And we're hoping that it can, ex it can be expanded across the country. But the fact that Belize City was the main area where we had these issues, yeah. um, we started here. And that came about um, after the elections in 2020. I had a dialogue with Mr. Kevin Cadle, who is the um, director of the human... Uh, of youth and um, we asked our ministers to dialogue with the other ministers and they were willing to come on board and I listened to an interview you had with the Prime Minister right on the show when you were discussing the whole issue of um, crime and what is going to be done and he explained that strategy on this um, mm -hmm. on the show and uh, you asked him why no and he asked you why not no mm -hmm. and you spoke about the whole issue of the financing because you do come with a cast. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you that the Prime Minister, who is the Minister of Finance, have disbursed the first amount of money for that program. And that's the reason why we have started the program in Belize City. Mm -hmm. But it do encapsulates all that you mentioned just a while ago. 
um, the Ministry of Health, yes, um, as well as the, the um, Human Development, mm -hmm. CRD, that do provide counseling for children, have now come together and we're seeing that um, some of these young persons who, like you rightly said, may have been traumatized due to what they may have witnessed, the, the killing of a loved one, they are now getting counseling. If a matter of fact, Mr. Cadle even went further to provide counseling for victims in a whole, mm -hmm. including um, the, the mother or the other siblings of um, these persons who are being killed on our streets. So uh, I can see where we're getting where we want to be. We're not there it's yet. It's not going to happen yes, overnight. overnight. And it do come with a cost. And we have to understand the, the, the financial constraint the government is operating under. But despite that, the Prime Minister have committed that he is going to find the money and he has been putting the money where his mouth, where his mouth is. Well, you just submitted your budget. Uh, do you imagine that your entire budget uh, request will be approved? Because well, we've all <laughs> talked about how important <laughs> crime is to I, all of us. I certainly wish that um, it would be approved. And again, in our budget submission for this year, we have inc included another recruit squad because we, we have seen where we recruited last year, or yes, last year, um, 220 officers, and from then to now, we have lost about three quarter, about two, two thirds of that. The new recruit? Yes. Well, not the recruit themselves, oh. but numbers okay. that would be equivalent to oh. two thirds of those um, officers who graduated. So, as much not as we the try, new graduates, no, but not from the, the board. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they and left because? Uh, Trisha, we dismissed some. Some resigned, some retired, some go off medically, some died. So the attrition rate is extremely high. Mm -hmm. And so it, it is necessary that we have another recruit squad to bring our numbers back up. In 2016, the department strength was 2,400. And now our strength is 2,200. Mm -hmm. So we're seeing that our society is growing. The demand for police, for police is increasing. But yet our numbers is going down. So we need to bring our numbers back up. How many officers were dismissed last year for... Um, last were dismissed from the force? Last year we dismissed about 60 police officers through mm -hmm. dismissals. And then we have a number of them who resigned. We have a number of them who retired. We have some who went out medically. Mm -hmm. And we have some who died. You know that you have constantly faced issues of uh, recordings and allegations and yes. photographs of police brutality. Have you been able to, um, I mean, what, what is your plan in being able to get the force to a place where they recognize? You say no tolerance, you say you investigate and you move towards uh, disciplinary action, but what's well, the status today? It goes back to what I said earlier. Uh -huh. I look at the police department as a house, and if it is that there is an infraction by a member, and uh, we don't take swift actions, mm -hmm. then the chance for other police officers to do the same increases. So what we have been doing is to deal swiftly with those officers who violate mm -hmm. our standing orders or our procedures. And once that is done, then the rest get the message. We have seen a tremendous decrease in allegations against police across mm -hmm. the country. And more so, police brutality, we have seen it gone down tremendously. And it has a lot to do with the fact that we're holding officers accountable. Mm -hmm. Now, before we run out of time completely, I want to shift for a bit. You did mention it earlier where um, domestic violence, domestic in the case that it is a household, a yes. family, uh, has been a prevalent issue in the country as well, leading to major crimes and even murder. Um, but of course, the one that came under the most scrutiny was the one that involved Honorable Patrick Faber, and you took a very stern stance on moving forward uh, with the allegation that was made. Looking back at it now, do you still feel that you made the right decision? Certainly, yes. Um, Marlene, <coughs> you have heard me many occasions, and um, I think it was in 2017 that the City Council had a forum on domestic mm -hmm. violence. I'm not certain if you were a speaker at that um, event. Mm -hmm. And I was also one of the speakers, um, speakers at that event. And uh, right at that event, I outlined what the department's strategy was going to be in terms of addressing domestic violence. And I've said then that every situation where a victim comes to the police, give a statement, request court action, we are going to proceed with the matter before the court. Mm -hmm. 
if a matter of fact, I was even more stricter than that. I even said that every occasion that, the person, that a person come, we were going to take the matter to court, whether the victim wants court action or not. Because if you come to the police, because you want action. Mm -hmm. But then um, other agencies um, reached out to me and said, Commissioner, your approach might be too stern and it might turn away victims from coming to the police because they might not want their partner to be arrested. Mm -hmm. And so based on that, I scaled back a bit and um, said, only in situations where the victim requested court action. And that was incorporated in our national crime fighting strategy. And, and that is implemented for all victims right who come and make a statement yes. and request court action. Yes. It just so happens that it is not out there because they are not Patrick Farber. Mm -hmm. Patrick Farber is a high-profile person. Mm -hmm. And it just so happened that his was blown out. But this happens every day. If a matter of fact, we have one of our own who went before the court yesterday. Again, the, 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 the wife requested court action. And uh, many times we have police officers appearing before the court. But that's usually the, one of the most delicate situations. Yes. I know of persons who, who have faced domestic violence to, due to a police officer, but mm -hmm. they will never feel comfortable going. And again, that's the issue that we need to get out of, Marlene. It is too many of our women and children are suffering in silence to domestic violence. Too many of our women and children are dying because of domestic violence. When are we going to have enough? Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't ascribe to the fact that domestic violence is a private issue. It is not a private issue. It must be a public issue. The public need to know what is happening. And so it is the only way that we're going to change this trend. Mm -hmm. Are we going to continue to live in a vacuum and believe that um, everything is all fine and dandy and until when somebody gets killed? Many times, people come to the police before, make the complaint of domestic violence. The police do nothing. And uh, a day later or months later, somebody is killed. Mm -hmm. When we could have done something, had we acted. Mm -hmm. So my stand is, and I maintain it without any apology, that once a person goes to the police, a victim of domestic violence, give a statement, they request court action, we are going to proceed. Do so not you come maintain back. that there was no political pressure for you to move no, no, forward No, 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 this. no, 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 no. Mm -hmm. Marlene, I have said before, if I need my minister to tell me to do my job, then might as well evacuate my, my, my position. Mm -hmm. Right? I don't. So that's one part of it. But there was a part where the police department did in fact uh, commit a very serious offense, and that was the leaking of the statement and the private information. Well, what was say, done as a result of that? I wouldn't say they commit an offense, but yes, what was done was well, it totally unethical. Well, it counters your very argument yes. of encouraging people to come forward if Certainly. the information is going to be leaked. Certainly, and um, we're still trying to find out exactly where the leak came from. Um, an investigation is, is being conducted to try and ascertain. But it is going to be difficult, Marlene, because we have what is referred to as a SIM system, the Crime Information Management System, where every report is uploaded and uh, every police officer can see it. Mm -hmm. So what we're trying to do now is to see how we can put some mechanism in that system where if I enter a report and you go and view it, the system will tell me that you view it. Mm -hmm. If you print it, the system will tell me you printed it. So if this were to happen again, we can narrow down to... What computer accessed it. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, we are running out of time. Um, I just want to ask, moving ahead for 2022, what's one thing that you would say as commissioner, having putting together the strategy, the planning, the budget plans, what are, is one thing that you are hopeful for in the year ahead that will improve the situation of crime in this country? Well, I'm hopeful that the current strategy that we're working on with the multi-agency um, approach is going to work out the way we want because I can see the commitment not only on, not on the part of the heads of department, but also on the part of the ministers because there is also a cabinet um, aspect to mm -hmm. what we do where the ministers who are responsible for different um, departments also meet to discuss what is, um, what is happening. And uh, I am pretty much optimistic that it is going to intensify. I'm optimistic that we're going to get the public buy-in in terms of what we're doing. Like you rightly said before, it is not an overnight thing. Um, certainly, there's a need for us to accelerate um, 
certain aspect of it, and that is what we're trying to do. I have reached out to Boeing and Boeing Limited through Mr. Michael Boeing, and he has committed to sponsor the basketball tournament for us. I will try to reach out to B BTL and see if they can sponsor the mentorship aspect for us. Because, mm -hmm. again, it is important for the corporate citizen to also play the role. Mm -hmm. And BTL and uh, um, Boeing and Boeing have been very supportive to the police crime fighting initiative. So we're hoping that even though we know that um, they are going through difficult financial times, that they'll still find that budget to help us. And apart from that, we also have money from the government that is going to be used. But what we're trying to do now, um, hopefully within the next month or two, is to expand the program across the country. Mm -hmm. So the fact that we're expanding it across the country is certainly will come at more cost. Mm -hmm. So if we can get Boeing and Boeing and uh, um, BTL to sponsor certain things in Belize City, then the other monies we have from government can be used to do in the, um, the districts. All right. Well, we thank you for coming in um, and being able to share with us a bit of your synopsis of 2021 and what lies ahead in 2022. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you very much, Marlene. Thank you very much, Gavin. And um, thanks to your listeners right. and viewers across the country. And uh, you mentioned Digi. We're going to be talking to them just after the break, uh, but we're going to be finding out about their latest promotion. So please, stay tuned. Tell them for sponsor the police team. That's right. That could be part of the promotion, right? Uh, to submit a tip, it's free. <laughs> Working off-site doesn't mean you have to be off your game. Studies have shown that simply adding a keyboard and mouse to your laptop increases productivity by 26%. Add a monitor and you'll be 35% more productive. At Foltex Systems, we have what you need to enhance your remote work or e-learning experience. With devices such as headsets, video conferencing monitors, webcams, keyboards, mice, docking stations, all with the brands you trust. Keep connected with collaboration tools like Microsoft 365 Suite and Kaspersky and perform efficiently no matter where you are. Foltech Systems, your technology center, where you'll come for the price, but stay for the service. Lamb's Funeral Service can assist you with a dignified send-off for your dearly departed, offering a complete funeral package which includes cremation, dressing, preparation and repatriation of remains. Caskets, wreaths and tombs are uniquely made by us. We provide quality service at the most affordable price. Give us a call or WhatsApp at 626-5732 or 623-2597. During ceremonies, the option of live streaming is available. Lamb's Family Funeral Service. It's not just a business. We are a shoulder for you to lean on. Bundle the fastest, most reliable, unlimited broadband in Belize with your prepaid or postpaid mobile plan or Netflix. You can bundle your broadband with your prepaid and enjoy 50% off all national calls, plus get SMS and data. Paid plans? Then bundle with any speed and pay only $25 extra monthly to enjoy unlimited smart-to-smart -smart calls, plus 500 minutes, plus 6300 megabytes of data. Stream unlimited HD movies and TV shows with our broadband plus the Netflix add-on for only $30 monthly and enjoy streaming on your laptop, TV, phone or tablet. Visit a smart showroom near you to sign up or upgrade to the bundle that's right for you. Smart, bringing people together. I chose Galen because of its strong reputation. Great scholarships. I came because I can take all my classes online. It is what I need to take me where I want to go. To learn more about our various programs, visit our website at www.galen.edu.bz or email us at admissions at galen.edu.bz. And come soar with the Galen Eagles! 
If you're looking for low-cost television advertising, have we got a deal for you. Advertise on Channel 5's Daily Classifieds. Channel 5's Daily Classifieds is one of the most effective methods for introducing yourself and your business to the community. Use our Daily Classifieds to recruit employees, promote specials, promote your products or services, promote a business opportunity, increase traffic to your website, and advertise items you have for sale. Let us help you save valuable time and money. Call us today at 223-0146 or visit us at our offices on Pony Drive to discuss how we can help your business grow affordably. Channel 5's Daily Classifieds. Advertise today. And we'll be back in a few, so stay tuned. Thanks, Jen. Hey there, we know you have to head out to work shortly, but don't forget that you can stay tuned by watching us on our Facebook live stream. Find us at Open Your Eyes BC and you can continue watching there. You can also download Facebook Watch on your streaming device and you can watch at your own convenience. And for all the behind the scenes fun, follow us on Instagram at OYE Belize. So, find us and follow us today. Whether you're at home, on the road, at work, or at school, if you see news happening or suspect that something might be up, call or text the Channel 5 News Belize tip line at 672-5555. You don't have to give us your name, just give us the tip. That's 672-5555. Call or text us so we can check it out. When someone you love becomes a memory, the memory becomes a treasure. Channel 5 introduces the Daily Obituaries. The Daily Obituaries will broadcast all death and funeral announcements and memorials to honor your loved one's life and memories. The Daily Obituaries airs on Channel 5 prior to the evening newscast with subsequent repeats at 10 p.m. and 12 noon the following day. It will also be placed online on our social media platforms, all for a standard package fee. Celebrate their lives and memories with Channel 5's daily obituaries. Honor in life and reverence in death. And we're back. We're moving into our second conversation for today. As I said, Valentine's Day may be over, but they are still sharing the love. We have representatives of Digi with us. We have a solu the solution specialist, Kenny Simpson, and senior solutions rep, Arely Salgado. Good Hi. morning, ladies. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for having us. Thank you, too. It's been so long since we've had you in studio. Yeah. <laughs> it does feel good to be back. Mm -hmm. All right. And you are back with good news, I hear, about uh, things that may be happening that we can benefit from? Of course. I mean, every time we come in, off in studio, we want to share the exciting things that's happening for the month of February. Right? And to kick mm -hmm. things off, we do have special deals on devices right now. Mm -hmm. Of course, we have deals and promotion with devices starting as low as $189 mm. and uh, you know you have your entire range you have your Samsung devices if you like you have your Apple devices and we have something to fit everyone's like budget mm -hmm. needs desires right so you could always check our lineup on our social media pages but what we want to share in addition to this these deals that you're getting on the devices we also are giving our customers free services when you purchase a device with us so you get, uh, like in the case of if you purchase a device up to a thousand dollars, then you get three gigabytes of data, a hundred minutes of talk and text. And if you purchase devices a thousand dollars or more, then you would get five gigabytes of data and a hundred minutes of talk and text, right? So that, those are just two reasons to purchase devices with us uh, this February, this love month, right? So if we missed Valentine's Day yesterday, right? You know, somebody forgot the date <laughs> and you and they need to make it up, yeah. right? They can still go in and get these deals even right. today on the fifteenth. Digi right. celebrates all month long. All so right. the device deals are available until the end of the month. Mm -hmm. Okay. And in addition to that, I mean so we said just now we have the discounted devices. Mm -hmm. You get your rewards. And in addition to that, 
Every customer who purchases a device also get a, gets a chance to win a his and her package worked over $3,000, right? So what you get in this Ooh. prize package is two um, Samsung S20 FE devices. What? His and, and it, hers phone? Oh. Yes, correct. Oh. And it doesn't necessarily have to be his and her. You know, we always say it could be, well, can you mention last time that we celebrate Galentine's? Oh. And that we celebrate our mothers, our fathers around this time as well. So, That's true. You know, there's countless things that you could do with these devices when you get them. But I mean, it's an awesome chance, an awesome price package. And again, those are three amazing reasons why you should purchase a device with us this um, this <laughs> Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still in December, this February, this, this love month. Oh. Yeah. So you, if I purchase a device, I get a ticket to possibly win the two Samsung as right. well. Automatic entry. Ooh. Wow. And that's in addition so to free services. So 100 talk, 100 mm -hmm. text and up to five gigs of LTE data. Right. Nice. Okay. And of course, you get to enjoy the awesome experience on our 4G LTE network. So, you know, that's a fourth reason. And we could go on and on, but <laughs> <laughs> we could leave it there. So you have, you have phones for as low as, I'm seeing they're $89? 189. 189. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> I was throwing in extra discount. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we do. And those devices are all LTE capable. Mm -hmm. Right, mm -hmm. so I mean, the, I think the camera quality is pretty good. Yeah. You could stream, use your Facebook, Netflix, anything mm -hmm. you like on these devices. So, and I'm seeing like a range of different brands from That's the different true. products we have as well. They have Samsung's, Alcatel, so oh. price mm -hmm. ranges, brands, DJ has it, and they right. all come with a warranty mm -hmm. of 90 day. days. And then for Samsung devices, because we are authorized Samsung resellers mm -hmm. uh, or certified Samsung resellers, you also get a year warranty on Samsung devices mm -hmm. with us. Nice. Yeah. And uh, these pro and these products are, um, you can go into any of their digital locations and buy them as well? Yes. They're available countrywide. Mm -hmm. mm. All right, there's a nice little red phone there that can replace a red rose, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's true. I'm sure some people would appreciate that more. Yeah. It's gonna last longer. So you have up until the end of February to take advantage of these deals, I guess, on if supplies last as well? That's right. true. Mm -hmm. That's right. So make sure you get to the stores now and, and purchase, right? And when do you draw the raffle? That will be March 1st. Okay. All right. Now, another hot item, I know we were talking about phones, um, but it's also tablets. You know, the kids mm -hmm. are still doing some of their schoolwork online. Uh, they may need an upgrade. Mm -hmm. What do you have available in that line? So we do have um, tablets. We have laptops and other devices as well. We have the Amazon Fire tablet mm -hmm. and all of those still qualify for these deals. So mm -hmm. they still get the minutes, the data, and they still get entered into the raffle at the end of the month. Oh, and your MiFi too, if you don't have mm -hmm. uh, connectivity on your way to school, or if you need connectivity, I should right. say, on your way That's to true. school. And of course, I mean, in addition to that, you could get your device with us, a, a laptop with us, your tablet with us, and of course, you have our wonderful DigiNet service that you know, could keep you connected mm -hmm. and you could enjoy amazing speeds. And I know Kenny will touch on that right now, but we, we offer the full package here, right? There, you can't, this is a one-stop shop for your communication needs, so. Right. Um. So this is, uh, uh, there you have the lap, is that a Chromebook for $6.99? Yes. Is that, I'm re I want to make sure. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, $6.99. Yeah, <laughs> so those, those are really helpful prices. The um, Fire tablet is $1.79. Mm -hmm. And then you can get the Samsung Galaxy tablets at four fifty nine and six eighty nine. Right. And uh, tell us uh, a little bit more about the the LTE network and the data because you know um, some people like you know are still like a little bit behind technologically and they and they don't know what uh, all they can take advantage of when they use that service. Well, that definitely means that you have better speeds with us. The experience, you know, a lot of people always complain about buffering and what's mm -hmm. not. I mean, there was a time where that was the case for everyone. You have your mobile data and you're trying to watch a little YouTube video and you have to wait a little while for it to load. But our LTE network, of course, with the device you have it, um, because they are compatible, you get to experience the, the best speeds, you know, um, not having to worry about buffering or, or that type of experience. Mm -hmm. And the great thing is that our entire mobile network, <coughs> excuse me, our entire mobile network is completely LTE capable. So. Once you have the right device, like I really mentioned, and you're on the right network, you're going to get blazing fast speeds with Digi's mm -hmm. LTE network. 
All right. So <laughs> let's talk about uh, the promotions when it comes to uh, your internet, internet connection, yeah. right? Yes. <laughs> so like I really mentioned. It's like it's fast, but we always want faster. <laughs> and it just got faster. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> so, it just got faster earlier this month in February. So if you have an existing Diginet connection, you automatically got up to 33% faster speeds. Mm -hmm. So there was no need to come in. There's no need to pay anything extra. Your monthly fee remains the same. Mm -hmm. And we are really excited about the introduction of this new promotion where you're getting 20 megs of Diginet speed, so you're still getting the same Diginet experience mm -hmm. over fiber for $49 a month. Oh, there you go. That's your, your, your brand new basic plan? Yes. That, no, actually this is an existing plan. So this used to be 30 megs mm -hmm. and now it got increased to 40 megs. Mm -hmm. So any existing customer? Um, got that increase, but our newest promotional offer, it's a limited time mm -hmm. offer, is our digit entry plan. So this is $49 a month, 20 megs. So you could do quite a lot if you're looking to, you know, make that move from using your mobile data. We have a lot of kids right now doing yeah. school still remotely. They're coming into um, classes, but they're also still doing online classes. So this is a really great offer for those kids who maybe just bought a tablet for us. Um, we have a lot of teachers who also still do classes online. We have yeah. call center agents. So anybody who is looking to transition from using your mobile data or having to go to an internet cafe or whatever the case is, this is a great time for you to transition into a monthly DigiNet broadband internet for your house. Yeah. Right. And what kind of speeds are we looking at? I mean, the, the, the lowest is uh, 20? Yes, the lowest is 20, and our largest plan just got upgraded from 120 megs to 150. Wow. Mm. And that one is really great because it comes with a free home phone, so you have unlimited talk mm -hmm. to any digi number. Mm -hmm. You get 180 minutes to call the U.S., mm -hmm. along with Mexico and a couple other countries. You also get either a... Me a prepaid mobile or a postpaid mobile plan. Yeah. So our largest plan is our DigiTriple that comes up to $199 a month. You get 150 gigs, sorry, megs mm -hmm. of speed. You get a digital plan so that you can talk all day. And then you get a mobile plan, either postpaid or prepaid, so that you can also enjoy your DigiNet while you're on the go. Okay. So we have price ranges for everybody, speed ranges, right. yeah. whatever your needs are, we have options at DigiNet. And just to emphasize what Kenneth said, um, for the three plans that were existing already, there was nothing required for our customers to get those increased speeds. We just increased it for you. So you could, I mean, so from the time we did it. if you didn't notice, or you yes. just thought you were special, <laughs> it's everybody. <laughs> right. <laughs> and also the limited time offer, the entry plan that we yeah. have right now, um, you'll have that monthly payment, that same $49 every month, right? Yes. But the limited time offer is referring to just get signing up now so mm -hmm. we encourage our customers to go out to the offices now to get signed up for that plan before that offer finishes it's not going to be here forever so yeah. take advantage of it while it's here so that of course is great for people and i think you said it right there are a lot of people who are still buying data as they go along because they don't want to take on an additional bill they think it's going to be too much mm -hmm. this would actually work out cheaper than buying data yeah and it's frequently. under 50 dollars for the month yeah. yeah so a little over a dollar for the day mm -hmm. and it's something you're going to have access to 24 7 and even more we have an additional promotion that for all of our DigiNet plans you're getting free installation for this month yeah. so for this new plan that we just um spoke about you can sign up for $50 up front so once you have $50 you can come into any digi store and get our newest digit entry plan for $49 a month so $50 right now and at the end of the month it's going to be $40 every month moving forward mm -hmm. nice all right so we talked about the DigiNet boosted speed the uh, m the month-long promotion on phones that comes with additional talk and data and text and of course that raffle as well that yeah. you want to take advantage of. <laughs> what else can we take advantage of in Love Month? Well, we also have our mobile promotions. Mm -hmm. So I'm from the mobile department. So I'm always excited to talk mm -hmm. about what we have going on, right? So we have our all in one bundles that we launched a couple months back. And what this, um, what this offers is a bundle of top text and data. And this is something that we've always had, right? But what we did recently is that we slashed the prices in more than half in some cases, and we're offering unlimited text in all plans 
we're offering talk and text to the other guys this time mm -hmm. and it's just a altogether better deal that you're getting and the bundle starts as low as three dollars so you just pay three dollars and you get talk you get unlimited text and you get a certain allowance of data so no need to buy different bundles you right get everything all in one bundle it's really nice. Yeah, oh. and this is for our prepaid customers, right? So you uh, you per, um, access this via the short code, via the Digigo app, mm -hmm. um, via IVR, which is dialing star 100 or star 700. So, yeah. You have options. And what's, this, yeah, what's the of size <laughs> of the bundle plans? Are there options? Right, so we do have uh, $3, $6, and $9 mm -hmm. um, plan options, if you like. So okay. it's very affordable. I mean, the, the last price was at like, Twenty dollars or something. I don't recall, but I <laughs> just know that it went down like it's by cheaper. a lot. Yeah. <laughs> cheaper. Yeah. All right, and I see you're after dark. You need to call that the after curfew special. Yeah. After curfew, right? <laughs> you can't, you can't well, be all person, so you can face them. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, this can't be called after curfew because exciting <laughs> news. <laughs> we um, are now offering this starting at eight p.m. So okay. you, right, all right. So um, you do just pay one dollar and ninety nine cents. You can purchase it anytime you like within the day, and then it becomes active at eight p.m. in the night. And this, again, is one of our standard promos, but this limited time offer is offering our customers three gigabytes of data from 8 p.m. to 6 a.m. Plus you get talk and text throughout that time. And again, that's just for one ninety nine. That's unlimited talk and text. Right. So you get the data, you could do WhatsApp calls, but you could also do your regular calls after you're done with that. Oh. Yeah. And this is the love month, you know, so you purchase this plan, you talk to your loved one <laughs> all, all night God. long. Yeah. There's no excuse then. Yeah. Right. Right. You can't get out of it and say, oh, the credit. Right. <laughs> right. And um, of course, we do have our promotion that we offer new customers. So if you're coming over from the other guys, mm -hmm. then you get to enjoy a free same one gigabyte of data and some credit to start you off on our you know the best network in Belize so mm -hmm. we have that we have many things going on as well um I'm not sure you if you guys have a prepaid number or not but mm -hmm. our prepaid customers right now are enjoying these loyalty offers so it's not something we push on social media or anything but you might get a SMS notification stating that you qualify for a specific reward if you do certain things right Mm -hmm. Of course, everybody, um, it's dependent on your trends, it's dependent on how much you purchase a data plan, how much you top up, etc. So you could just look out for those notifications via SMS and you could get a chance to enjoy an amazing reward that we're offering to you. Yeah, so what What's the rewarding? trend? Do you find more people doing prepaid or going with the plans? Um, we do have a lot of prepaid customers, mm -hmm. yeah. but I know that it, it's dependent on your usage, right? So we do have some people that really want to um, have that larger amount of data or allowances for the month so it, it really depends on mm -hmm, on what yeah. your needs and um you know the yeah. theirs are and the great thing about these plans is that you're always getting bundles so whether you're getting your DigiNet bundle or your mobile bundle they always come with talk text and data so mm -hmm. it kind of starts that transition into your postpaid plan right. and even so we do have the postpaid sorry the prepaid data plans where you still get to keep your prepaid number you get you your data them. on you know a postpaid basis yeah. if you want to call it that you have and a monthly plan a monthly on a prepaid yes, phone. Right, yeah. a prepaid number, but then yeah. your talk and text are still Yeah, so we have prepaid. so much options available to our customers. You see, I sound exhausted, but I know. Exactly. Yeah. Like, it's just so much things. <laughs> <laughs> right. So these are, of course, uh, as we said, these are the promotions that are ongoing now for February. Anything else, Kenny? You look like you want to share <laughs> some... Uh, some news. I really want to, but we're going to get in trouble if we start talking about March. We're just halfway into February, so we have to, we have to keep pushing these It's because Valentine's Day is over. We start looking at... Uh, <laughs> no, like you said, a lot of people maybe missed it. Some people have to make up, so mm. they have options. They have options yeah. for, you know, the loved ones, the kids, the mm -hmm. entire family. Digi is giving you options for the loved month. All mm -hmm. right. So there you have it. That's the, the recap is that the, uh, the promotions are ongoing for phones, tablets, laptops. Um, I, I forgot to ask, do you still do payment plans for some of these items? Not at the moment. Okay. We don't have at the moment. Yeah. So this is the best time to take advantage when they're at discount. Right. Mm -hmm. And you get to enter the raffle where you can win two, two devices. 
two Samsung S20. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Valued at $2,000. There you go. Yeah. And it's not his or her, his and hers. It's matching. It's just a <laughs> matching, right? Matching, <laughs> we can have matching co-host phones. Or yeah. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> yeah. That uh, sounds like a promise, by the way. Uh, I, I don't know. <laughs> like, well, <let> it <laughs> Kevin. <laughs> And uh, you have the after dark, you have the boosted internet, internet plans. plans, as well as for people who have been uh, trying to fit within their budget a monthly home plan, they now have a plan as low as $50. Right. $49. $49. Yeah, that's that's yeah. $49 every month. All you need is $50 to come sign up. Okay. Right. And um, just to add there, uh, we do have promotions that are upcoming like this weekend from mm -hmm. the mobile side so we just ask our customers to stay tuned to our social media pages so that you could know you know we're, we're not going to announce that right now because mm -hmm. we want to surprise you mm -hmm. but just make sure you stay tuned and just before i guess we finalize i just want to mention about our digital wallet mm -hmm. so this we are so excited to share about what will be the best mobile wallet solution in belize mm -hmm. So um, we're going to offer a, like I mentioned, a mobile wallet solution where you'll be able to do like a number of different services, payment services. Mm -hmm. So you'll be able to transfer to other digital wallet customers. You'll be able to go to like a store and purchase something and just pay for it from your mobile device. Mm -hmm. And there's going to be no need to have to figure out, okay, do you have Atlantic Bank? Do you have Belize Bank? Can we transfer? What's your account number? There's going to be no need to remember all of that. Once you have your phone or even on the website, mm -hmm. it's going to be a simple transaction, all electronic, all real time, all very, very simple. And even more exciting, right? So. With the Jewelit, there's no requirement for a bank account. Mm -hmm. Anybody would be able to sign up for this so long as you have a mobile number. So we know that almost everybody in Belize has a mobile number, right? a phone. Yeah. So this will be really big. It doesn't and even have to be a digi number. Right, it doesn't even have to be a digi number. It could be oh. the number from the other guys as well. And you'll get access to the mobile wallet. So everybody will, will be able to have the Jewelit if they'd wish. And the sign up will be so easy. Um, you, like I said, you'll be able will to, I be do able to change my credit to, to money, change it back, right? You'll be able on to your wallet, <laughs> you'll be able to do all of it. You'll be able to put to money into yeah. your account as yeah. well as take out. So, yeah, it's up to you, but you know, it, it'll be there for your use, and the transfer rates will be the cheapest in the entire country of Belize. All so. right, and when do we officially launch the Digi Wallet? It's coming, coming soon. <laughs> That's all we get. Very that soon. Sure. That's all we get. We have to make sure that we have a reason to come back. That's right. right. Yeah. We, we welcome you back to be able to tell us more. But we have definitely been seeing the advertisements and uh, seeing that there's a lot of work and, and promise coming in this latest uh, mobile wallet solution. Right. All right, ladies, anything else you want to leave with us? Well, we just want to say thank you for having us and, you know, encourage our viewers to always Stay tuned, stay connected, see what's coming, what's happening. We never fail to offer something exciting like every month, every week. So We're always working on something at DJ. Right. <laughs> mm -hmm. right. Well, ladies, thank you so much for, bringing, uh, for coming in and showing us all of those updates. I'm sure a lot of our viewers are going to be taking advantage of a lot of those great deals. Uh, mm -hmm. So thanks for telling us about them. Thank you. Thanks for having us. And with that, we're going to be taking another short break. And when we come back, we're going to be talking about cybersecurity. So please stay tuned and we'll be right back. Digi, the premier name in voice and data, is also the country's leading provider of innovative services and solutions for small business and enterprise. At DigiBusiness, we offer solutions, tools, and applications to support your business needs. Reduce costs, improve efficiency, and excel in a changing world where no idea is too big and no task is too small. From technology advising to design implementation and management, our team of qualified solution sales and specialists can develop a reliable and robust infrastructure, allowing you to spend more time on what matters most, your business. Visit us online to explore how DigiBusiness innovative products and solutions can help your business reduce costs and improve efficiency.
Why should you wear your mask? To protect myself. My friends. My family and others. I wear my mask because I love my grandparents. With so many reasons to wear a mask, we continue to advise persons to wear a face mask properly, covering both nose and mouth. Together, we can keep Belize COVID-19 safe. Your life just got a lot less complicated with Belize Bank Contactless MasterCard Debit Card. Introducing our standard debit and MasterCard Platinum Debit Cards. Now you can make purchases anywhere MasterCard is accepted with one tap, pay and go. Your contactless card never has to leave your hands, especially in these times. And your card is embedded with multiple layers of security. Platinum card holders get to enjoy extra benefits like price protection, purchase protection, trip inconvenience and luggage protection just just to name a few. Start enjoying a cashless lifestyle today with the Belize Bank. If you're looking for low-cost television advertising, have we got a deal for you. Advertise on Channel 5's Daily Classifieds. Channel 5's Daily Classifieds is one of the most effective methods for introducing yourself and your business to the community. Use our Daily Classifieds to recruit employees, promote specials, Promote your products or services, promote a business opportunity, increase traffic to your website, and advertise items you have for sale. Let us help you save valuable time and money. Call us today at 223-0146 or visit us at our offices on Pony Drive to discuss how we can help your business grow affordably. Channel 5's Daily Classifieds. Advertise today. Whether you're at home, on the road, at work or at school, if you see news happening or suspect that something might be up, call or text the Channel 5 News Belize tip line at 672-5555. You don't have to give us your name, just give us the tip. That's 672-5555. Call or text us so we can check it out. And if you're joining us right now, we are just getting our third conversation for this morning started. And as we mentioned before the break, we are going to be talking a bit about cybersecurity. And uh, joining us for this conversation via Zoom, we have Tony Neat, who is the CEO of Get Safe Online, which is uh, the UK's leading awareness resource that gives security tips. Uh, good morning, Tony. Eleni, um, Gavin, good morning to you um, from a very wet and cold United Kingdom. It's fantastic to be with you and uh, all your smiling faces. Oh, oh well, it's uh, great to have you here. And um, it actually is a bit um, cool and wet here, at least for Belize. <laughs> <laughs> Gavin, you don't know what cold is until yes. you come to Wales. <laughs> My first question is, Tony, is, is this a secure connection we have here? Yeah. <laughs> Well, well, we live in hope, don't we? You know, um, we can't guarantee everything, but we can put everything in place in order to try and be as safe as we can. Yes. Uh, and, you know, let's, let's just jump right into the conversation. Get Safe Online is really trying to build awareness globally about the risks that exist with our online activity. And I have to be honest, I think it's, it's one of those things that we, it comes so second nature for us to just get online and do anything that we don't necessarily stop to think about how much we are protecting ourselves or and or information. Do you know you're dead right and from um, uh, doing this work now around the world I've realized that the threat and the risk 
is the same in every country I go to, whether it's a small island in, uh, in the South Pacific, whether it's the Caribbean or the United Kingdom, um, the risks and the threats are the same. And what I find is that people aren't really interested until it happens to them or to happens to a friend or a relative of theirs. But, um, you know, I'm a passionate believer about the Internet. And, but I'm even more passionate about people being secure. And, and I think there are some simple, easy steps people can take to make themselves a lot more secure than they are at the moment. Yeah. What's the biggest mistake that you find people make? I think it's, um, uh, there's a number. First of all, it's passwords. Uh, I think people use one password, a simple password, um, when really they should be using a more complicated password and a number of different ones. I always relate it to um, uh, something like a key. We haven't got a one key for everything that we do in our in our lives, even though it would be nice and easy to do so. So we've got different keys for the front door, the back door, the shed, um, for the cupboards for our phone, um, we got keys for our, our cars, keys for our businesses. If we had one key and we lost it, we'd have to change all the locks. It's exactly the same when it comes to passwords. Security software is really important, uh, making sure that we update our operating system and being careful about what we say and what we put online. It's one of the biggest things that I've seen in Belize is the concern over bullying and over threats that are done online. So these are the things we've got to be aware of. We've got to protect our identity. We've got to protect ourselves when we're shopping. Yeah, that, that's so interesting how you liken passwords to keys. Um, let, me, let me just step back for a moment because I think we know there are threats that exist online. We see and hear and read stories sometimes of things like identity theft or um, having uh, money being stolen. Um, but I don't think we understand how much at risk we are, especially in, the Beli in Belize. You, the, get, the Get Safe Online campaign is reaching out throughout the world, as you said, and even the Caribbean. You're looking for ambassadors. Is the threat level the same for us here as it is everywhere else? Do you know it is? Um, the threat is just as big if you're sitting in your home in Belize, as if you're sitting on an island in the South Pacific or sitting in the UK or America or France or Germany. Um, the, the criminals are getting very clever to what they're looking to do and the risks are there. But I think, as I've said, the internet is a fantastic place. Yeah. Millions of interactions and transactions successfully conducted every single day. We hear about the horror stories. Um, but we can get around those horror stories. And yes, there are always going to be people who are looking to abuse us, looking to steal from us, looking to f defraud us. Um, but what we've got to do is put things in place so we know we're safe and pass on that information to our friends and our family. Yeah. Um, you, the identity theft portion is one of the things that um, very often can happen. You don't even know. Uh, how can a person check to see if their information has already been stolen and is being used online? Well, check with your banks, first of all. Mm -hmm. Keep an eye on your uh, bank statements. Um, I don't know whether you have check credit checking agencies in Belize. You probably have. Maybe link up to one of those and see what's happening. But it's, it's about prevention um, and, and curing the problem that we see. So, yes, it's interesting to find out if you've been a victim. But what we've got to try and do is protect ourselves from becoming a victim. So mm. all the necessary precautions. In Belize, you actually have now a Get Safe Online dedicated Belize website. It's getsafeonline.bz. Um, and you can go there and get all the tips, literally hundreds of pages of different things that you can find out about and know how to protect yourselves. So I'm, I, I, was, I thought it was absolutely fantastic when we had the opportunity with a grant from the Foreign and Commonwealth Office within the UK um, to come across there. And what I realized when I got across to Belize was, guys, you know what you're doing. There are some real good experts and knowledgeable people that are doing this. And all that we're doing is sharing that information back and forth. We learn from you. You learn from us. It's a great educational resource throughout the whole of the Caribbean. Yeah. Yeah. Now, it's also looking at things like misinformation and, and also how to uh, differentiate between the sources that you access for information. I think... Um, I, I'd love to say there's a silver bullet for misinformation, um, <laughs> fake news as they call it. And that appears in everything, in politics, 
in medicine, um, in art, in just daily life. We see people coming out with things that have got no credibility behind them. Um, nobody, you know, what you need to do is go to well-trusted sources, uh, organizations that have done their research, professors, doctors, um, scientists who know what they're doing and what they're talking about coming to, to uh, organizations like yours um, that do their homework before they get some expert on to talk about it don't listen to mrs smith down the road who just happens to have an opinion though everyone's entitled to their opinion and i'm a massive supporter of freedom of speech but that doesn't mean that you can't do your research to find out what that fake news is that's coming through possibly on a daily if not even an hourly basis yeah and one of the biggest um, issues when it comes to fake news is, this, is the easy uh, uh, spread, or I'll say transmissibility, or spread through uh, things like social media. Yeah. And uh, the use of social media is also one of the things which gets if, um, is, is, is trying to tackle. Um, can you talk a little bit about some of those risks, especially considering how widespread and prevalent social media use is? Well, look, in, uh, in Belize, as in the rest of the world, where, where on um, these social media channels, Get Safe Online, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, um, they're all areas that we provide information. But there are also areas where there's a lot of fake information out there. Mm -hmm. But uh, and I'm not saying don't look at it. I'm just saying be informed. Be, know that there's genuine information out there and there's people with an agenda. Now, I'm not going to make a decision onto what that is. I'm afraid someone else has got to make that. But as long as you do the research. But yeah, let's be honest, social... Uh, social platforms, social media platforms have been an, a fantastic ad advancement for us, our children, our family, keep in contact. I, I, I've got no no relations in Belize, though I'd love to because I know your scuba diving is unbelievable. <laughs> I'm a big scuba diver. So, Gavin, um, keep your <laughs> spare room free because I'm going to come across and, and stay with you to go uh, to be on your show live and also to go scuba diving so uh, you've got to be aware of these social medias and what you're listening to and though you know a lot of these people are speaking from the heart they may not have uh, the full vast experience to give good information but social media is really important but we've got to put it in its place so, Tony, tell us a bit, you know, you said that, that uh, you look forward to coming to Belize. What, how did Get Safe Online, um, why did you decide to build a presence here, and, and what's, what's the um, campaign looking like? Well, in 2019, we were asked to do um, a number of websites and a lot of, a lot of work on awareness raising in the Caribbean. Mm -hmm. And after a couple of months, we realized that, um, uh, Belize is one of the areas that we should have been involved as well. So we added that to our list mm -hmm. and it's been fantastic. We've got an ambassador day coming up on the 24th oh. and we're asking all community leaders and business owners if they'd like to book a free online safety session with some of our ambassadors. Those ambassadors are, are anything from school teachers, nurses, um, office workers, police officers, and they give their time up free to educate um, members of, of the Belize public um, to educate them on how to be safe and secure. And as I say, on the 24th is Ambassador Day. And if you need to know more, go to the Get Safe Online website, put in Ambassador, and you could become an ambassador or find out where you can go to one of those sessions. But Belize is one of the greatest places we go to there. You're hungry for information. Mm -hmm. You've also got those experts, so it's brilliant being with you this morning. Yeah. So you, you still uh, you have Belizeans signing up to be ambassadors promoting internet safety? Absolutely. We've got a number of them at the moment. We're looking for more uh, and we're looking for those to give out presentations. We provide all the information that you need, all the education to bring yourself up to speed in relation to what we're doing. And then you're giving back to the community, which is what I've always tried to do. You know, my whole family is like that. I've got a wife who's a nurse, three daughters who are nurses and teachers. And, and I think there's nothing better than giving back to the community and, and people if they want to. And I know that they're very giving in belief. If you want to be part of this, please come to the website and join us. How do you measure the impact as to how many people have been educated or now aware about internet security and, threat and, and potential threats? 
Well, we know how many people visit the website, and that's literally thousands of people uh, visit it every single week. We know the films that we've got on there, the little videos we've got on there, 29,000 people within Belize has looked at those videos. So that's very encouraging to know that they're doing. And, and of course, as we become more prominent, you know, with things like your program, where people are hearing about Get Safe Online, to know where to go, to get this free, independent advice. You know, we're not, we've, we're not being sponsored by anybody the only organization that we really work with in belize is the ministry of foreign affairs and new growth industries but we're looking for other partners that we may be able to share our information with and 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 we welcome that all the time but we're always measuring are we making a difference are we doing the right thing are we covering the areas that we know are a problem in belize and it's something we're looking at and speaking to our ambassadors every day in fact you know, we spoke to some of the ambassadors before I came on your program, and one of the things that they admitted to was hate speech. They said mm. that that was a major problem in it. And I think, to be honest, it's a major problem in every country in the world. Yeah. Who, who do you think will benefit the most from learning about Internet safety? Because there, there are two generations. There are those who are learning to use it and those who have been using it since, you know, before they could talk. Um, and the risks are different for these different def demographics. They can be, but they can also be the same. Um, so when I went to school, there was no such thing as computers. Um, you know, I've, I've learned that and I'm, I'm encouraged with it. I was a, a serving police officer. I retired 17 years ago and I helped set up Get Safe Online. And uh, we didn't have computers when I first started. Now they're there and you're dead right. But what we're discovering is when we do some research on this is uh, children are very, very quick to pick up technology, but they're not necessarily quick to learn about threats and risks. Uh, the older people, parents, grandparents they know about risks and threats and if we can bring those two together so that maybe the children can educate us about technology and we can educate them about the risks and the threats that are out there we all become a lot better we find when we've done the research is that the uh, older people are, are slightly more secure because they're a bit more cautious about what they do where children quite rightly so they they uh, like to test their boundaries and their parameters and they will push things and they will do things now with a lot of them they haven't got the money but even in something that we've started which is uh, gaming for good we realize mm. the children are being, uh, being being hit in relation to money and threatened and also abused on gaming so gaming is a big one and that's something you should be doing share what you're doing with your children and get your children to share what they're doing on those games and maybe get involved in them so you spoke earlier of some of the common threats that we see one looking after your password um, for all your internet sites what about uh, things like antivirus protection or malware protection do you think that those are um, some of the steps that we take too lightly? They cost money, and so people avoid them. They don't have to cost money. You can get software downloads that are free. Now, you may feel that the amount of, of risk that you're taking is well worth um, paying out, you know, maybe 20, 30, um, uh, and, and paying for that. But we're doing a media campaign in February, this month, in fact, exploring ransomware where we're doing a campaign specifically around malware and what that to do, that does so making sure that you've got security software is really really important antivirus anti-malware and, and the way Help i do us it, out here a moment though what is malware and ransomware it's little it's a little bit of code it's a bit like having a virus so you've got a virus in you and you become ill it's exactly the same when it comes to computers there's a little bit of code that's brought in either from a website or from your email and that will affect your computer and the worst case scenario it will literally lock you out and you'll get a ransom demand to say we will open up your computer but it can also affect the little things in when you're working in relation to it so it's being aware of that mm. and, and I, I talked to lots of people and they said and they said to me Tony I bought my computer and it, it didn't cost me a lot of lot of money in UK schemes it was four or five hundred pound he said but I didn't spend 30 40 on getting software uh, security software now I've lost everything on my computer and I would pay thousands to get that back. Mm. 
So it's not the price of your computer, it's the content and all those pictures, all those christening weddings, um, all those Christmases that you've had together and the pictures going down the years and potentially you've lost them all. So really think about security software. It's probably the second on my list next to passwords to make sure you've got on your computer. So I divide it into two, protecting your your PC, your computer, your laptop, your um, your mobile phone, and protecting yourself with things like social media and making sure that you don't put too much information about yourself or, of course, about other people. So we should have security software on our phones as well? Yes, I think if you're using... I don't know what the prevalence is in Belize, but you know, there's basically two around the world. Um, there's Android phones and there's uh, iPhones. Now, iPhones are, um, are quite uh, relatively safe on their own, but now most of the Android phones that come out come out with security. But if you've got an older Android phone, come to the Get Safe Online website and have a look at what you should do. You should download security specifically for your phone because that can be compromised just like your desktop or your laptop. And here's another one that I know that's really common. How many of us don't look for free Wi-Fi with mm. open access? Uh, uh, you have a yeah. warning on your site saying, not because you connect to it, can connect to it means it's safe. And you're laughing, but we all, but we do it. You're, you're better informed. <laughs> of course we do. We all do it. We all want something for free. And I'm saying, <laughs> you know, okay, if you're in a, in a cafe, you don't know who they are. And remember the name that they use could be any name. So it could be a well-known security um, company. I know that you had, um, was it Digicel on yes. before me? Um, you know, they might be providing it, but there's, there's no reason why a cafe can't call their hotspot Digicel. So you think you're on Digicel, but you may not be. So you've got to be careful of that. So if you're going to use it, use it for for um, an, old, an old session, surf in the internet. But please, don't go on to um, these um wireless connections and do your banking or the big one for me is your emails mm. and putting an email in because an email the information that people can gain from your email if they've got access to it via your your password is immense and we've seen hundreds of thousands of pounds being stolen from people because their emails have been compromised so be careful where you log on the best possible way to log on to your mobile phone is through the internet service provider that you use because that is a direct secure link from you directly to the bank and you're far more secure doing it that way than even on your on your machine at home uh, on your own broadband okay all right so th those were three things that we have learned uh perhaps that we did not consider before uh anything else that you would tell us based on what you have uh, found out about or internet usage here in belize that uh, you think we'd, we'd need to know? People want to learn in Belize. People are, are, are keen to be educated about it. All I would say is if you've learned something from this, then please share it with somebody today. And if you haven't gone to the getsafeonline.bz website, do so today. Have a look and see what you said, what you think. It's free. Um, it's impartial. Pass it on to somebody else that you know as well. And if somebody wants to be an ambassador, they can uh, sign up on that website as well. Absolutely. If you go to Get Safe Online BZ, um, put in Ambassador, and it will take you to the Ambassador page where it will tell you how to sign up to be an ambassador or how to get a session for your employees or your friends or your church um, so that you can be educated more and be and feel more embodied to be on the internet. I think it's a great opportunity for people in Belize to do. All right. Um, well, yeah. uh, Tony, uh, thank you so much for sharing all of that information. We definitely appreciate it. And I think we've all gotten a bit wiser. <laughs> <laughs> now, I'm, 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 I'm a little bit nervous, nervous but... <laughs> oh, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> you, you've made me a bit nervous, but I'll just go, go and uh, double check my software now. <laughs> I'm sure you will, and I'm sure you'll be very secure. Any problems, you can give me a personal ring. All right. We appreciate it so much. And of course, uh, people can find out more through the website. There is a specific Belize website, getsafeonline.bz. And uh, you can even sign up to be one of their ambassadors and help to spread information about internet safety. Tony, we appreciate you taking the time today. And next time you're here, whether it's scuba or at least uh, or whatever other visit, you can join us on set. Malini, it's been lovely talking to you and to you, Gavin. Have a good day. And listen, all your, your watchers, please keep safe. All right. Thank you, too.
And with that, we're going to go ahead and take a break. When we come back, Gavin's going to tell us what's trending. So please, stay tuned. Security Board, in collaboration with the Labor Department, takes this opportunity to remind insured persons of the requirements for compensation when on sick leave. Any employee who has worked with an employer for at least two months is entitled to 16 working days of sick leave with full pay every year. This is how it works. Upon approval of a sickness or injury benefit claim by SSB, 80% of the employee's weekly insurable earnings is paid as a social security benefit and the difference in the employee's salary is paid by the employer. This is to ensure that the employee does not suffer any loss of wages when ill. After 16 days, compensation for sick leave is paid as a social security benefit only. Some conditions apply. This message is brought to you by the Social Security Board and the Labor Department. Social Security Board, safeguarding you, your family, your future. It's almost lunchtime and Alice is getting hungry and forgot to bring cash. She remembers that eCash now has a geolocation feature in which she can easily view the eCash merchants near her, especially restaurants. Her co-workers also ask her to order food for them. Chicken chow mein, please, and a Coke. The merchant sends her the payment link, she taps confirm, and within a few minutes, her food is delivered. Alice then views her transaction history and taps on the transaction recently made, then taps the split the bill button where she selects the unevenly option and moves the bar to the desired amount per person. The request is then sent to her friends. Her colleagues accept the request and are ready to enjoy their meals. Geolocation and splitting the bill via eCash make Alice's life a whole lot easier. It's a fact that your credit lasts longer when using Smart. During these times, we're all trying to find ways to cut costs and save the little resources we have. With Smart, it's easy to do that. It's a fact that with Smart, your credit lasts longer. You can call Smart to Smart and Smart to Digi using your promo credit. While with the other guy, you can only call on net, Digi, or BTL numbers. What does this mean? You get to call any national number using your promo credit. Your promo credit is free, so that call is also free. Know your facts. Don't be tricked by the other guy. Be smart and save a dollar. If you're looking for low-cost television advertising, have we got a deal for you. Advertise on Channel 5's Daily Classifieds. Channel 5's Daily Classifieds is one of the most effective methods for introducing yourself and your business to the community. Use our Daily Classifieds to recruit employees, promote specials, promote your products or services, promote a business opportunity, increase traffic to your website, and advertise items you have for sale. Let us help you save valuable time and money. Call us today at 223-0146 or visit us at our offices on Pony Drive to discuss how we can help your business grow affordably. Channel 5's Daily Classifieds. Advertise today. And we'll be back in a few, so stay tuned. Thanks, Jen. Hey there. We know you have to head out to work shortly, but don't forget that you can stay tuned by watching us on our Facebook live stream. Find us at Open Your Eyes BC and you can continue watching there. You can also download Facebook Watch on your streaming device and you can watch at your own convenience. And for all the behind the scenes fun, follow us on Instagram at OYE Belize. So find us and follow us today. Whether you're at home, on the road, at work, or at school, if you see news happening or suspect that something might be up, call or text the Channel 5 News Belize tip line at 672-5555. You don't have to give us your name, just give us the tip. That's 672-5555. Call or text us so we can check it out. 
When someone you love becomes a memory, the memory becomes a treasure. Channel 5 introduces The Daily Obituaries. The Daily Obituaries will broadcast all death and funeral announcements and memorials to honor your loved one's life and memories. The Daily Obituaries airs on Channel 5 prior to the evening newscast with subsequent repeats at 10 p.m. and 12 noon the following day. It will also be placed online on our social media platforms, all for a standard package fee. Celebrate their lives and memories with Channel 5's Daily Obituaries. Honor in life and reverence in death. Been drinking all night. Feeling so high. Better not try. Won't even try. Been drinking all night. Feeling so high. Better not drive. Ain't gonna try. Been drinking all night. Feeling so high. Better not drive. Ain't gonna try. If you're drinking and driving, I'm not going. I'm not going with ya. If you're drinking and driving, I'm not going. I'm not going with ya. People die every day. I'm not going. I'm not going with ya. I'ma find my own way. I'm not going. I'm not going with ya. It's okay. I'll wait. Even good people make mistakes. I don't wanna realize when it's too late. Drinking and driving is never safe. If you're drinking and driving, I'm not going. I'm not going with ya. If you're drinking and driving, I'm not going. I'm not going with ya. Been drinking all night. Feeling so high. Better not drive. Ain't gonna try. Been drinking all night. Feeling so high. Better not drive. Ain't gonna try. And we're back and if you're joining us right now it is trending talks Tuesday and that is when I bring you some of the trending social media topics that have been buzzing uh, and that's what we do every Tuesday and of course there is a lot to talk about this week and uh, first of all uh, I want to talk about one of the biggest things which was trending all over social media for over the weekend and yesterday as well and that is the ongoing uh, drama going on between uh, Kanye West and his soon-to-be ex-wife Kim Kardashian uh, West. Now, of course, um, a lot of the drama has been going on because he's been making a lot of public comments, trying to win her back, and he's also been uh, doing some insulting on uh, to Pete Davidson, who um, Kim Kardashian is also uh, confirmed to be dating at the moment. So, as you can see right now, he started last week with a post talking about who he's hoping that um, his family can come back together. But of course, Kim Kardashian has made it clear that he doesn't, uh, she doesn't want to continue uh, the marriage. Um, and that has led to, over the recent uh, weekend, um, Kanye going on a pretty uh, big social media tirade, posting lots of memes, posting lots of comments, including some uh, conversations that he had with Kim that were private. Um, now, it started off pretty entertaining because as you can see, it started off with um, uh, you know, images like this where we can see um, like he's pitting other people against each other. Um, also, if you notice, uh, Billie Eilish is um, on the other side, Taylor Swift, some of the people who Kanye has uh, traditionally had problems with. And um, he uh, has been saying that uh, to, to show um, basically, um, you know, as he interprets it, the war uh, of who is and against him. Um, so it did start off a bit um, on the lighter side, but yesterday things did get a bit more tense and you can see that it's a now deleted post uh, but uh, where he says um, he's encouraging his fans not to do anything violent to Pete um, but he said he's going to handle his situation himself. He has deleted that because some people have of course interpreted that as a threat if you look at the image as well. Um, so it is a concerning uh, turn that this has taken as well as you know like I mentioned him 
posting some of the private conversations which he's had with Pete and Kim. Um, a lot of people are now um, saying that, well, maybe that could be a threat. Is this abusing, harassing, um, harassing behavior? And uh, so it is um, very, uh, the situation is rather unfortunate because as we know, uh, children are at the center of it. Uh, they do, um, Kim and Kanye do have four children together. So uh, the situation is definitely not an easy one. Uh, but um, Kanye has deleted some of his more inflammatory posts, so hopefully they're going to find a resolution. Uh, we hope the situation does tone down a little bit, but of course, because of the public posting, the public nature of the drama, and because these uh, guys are such big celebrities, it was one of the biggest topics. It was trending all over, and as a matter of fact, even on Sunday, it uh, was trending over the Super Bowl, which is the next topic that we're going to talk about today on Trending Talk Tuesdays. Of course, the Super Bowl was held on Sunday and the Rams did win by a, a very narrow victory. But um, turning to social media, a lot of memes and a lot of talk about the halftime show were uh, buzzing all around. And so we saw lots of memes on Twitter, Facebook, um, Instagram. And uh, so I wanted to talk a little bit about those and show you some of my favorite ones. Uh, looking at this one, and now 50 Cent is now a full dollar. That one made me laugh. Um, and there's a couple more that I thought that were pretty funny. Um, we've got this one talking about the Avengers. Uh, again, so we're seeing Snoop Dogg, uh, Dr. Dre, uh, Mary J. Blige. Um, and so a lot of people did enjoy that halftime show. I know I did. Um, and you see another joke about 50 Cent. Uh, he's performing after two quarters, of course. And the halftime show was another <laughs> One of the other things was that um, a lot of the performers were from way back when, like the 90s and the early 2000s. So we got a lot of jokes about people who are millennials or per perhaps uh, people who are even older who are enjoying it. So here's the one talking about how she is me after dancing in the house at the halftime concert. Um, so I know that the, and then this one when Eminem hits us with the mom spaghetti, I know that song. Uh, when that song came out, that was a huge thing. I remember when I was in high school. Um, so of course, the halftime show was definitely a treat for some of the older ones. And, and so uh, millennials like me definitely had a good time watching it. And um, I thought it was a great show. And overall, uh, the Super Bowl was one of the biggest trending topics, of course. Um, there was a lot of celebrities there as well, as usual. And so, uh, so the Super Bowl, of course, and the memes that were attached to it, um, oh, I like this one too, um, that you know, you may be able to get down like you used to, but you're gonna need a minute to get right back up. And you know, some of us um, got our knee problems, back problems, uh, but you know, still had fun watching that. And uh, finally, our last trending topic to talk about, of course, one of the other big things that happened over the past few days was yesterday was Valentine's Day. So uh, that is a day of love. People were giving gifts, flowers, candy. Uh, but uh, for some of us who, like me, who weren't uh, um, enjoying Valentine's Day with someone special yesterday, we were online looking at some of these funny memes. And one of my favorite trends which we, uh, that I saw yesterday came from Belizean Rice and Memes, which is a really great Instagram page that's always bringing great Belizean memes. And uh, they were doing a lot of Valentine's cards, which were really funny. Uh, so as you can see, the one's right up on the screen right now. It's like this, girl, you must be Miss Earth because you look like my destiny. That's one of my favorite ones. Uh, this one, I want you like more than Guatemala wants Belize. Um, another one, oh, right, baby, hotter than Marie Sharp's extra fiery red hornet sauce. <laughs> And I like that they included the trademark on that as well. That was a, another funny thing. As um, But uh, the Valentine's memes were funny. And this was a great one. We got a shout out too. Um, I saw this one on Facebook. Someone in need to go up and open your eyes because man, love must be blind. <laughs> so the Valentine's memes were definitely funny. Um, and these were some of my favorites. Uh, but uh, we saw those all over the different social media platforms. And that was just some of the trending topics that I saw and I wanted to share with you guys um, and of course if you got any more topics that you want to share you can send us an email right into the show um, send us a message on Instagram and we'd be glad to talk about it yeah <laughs> all right yeah we welcome you come and share your love story here on open your eyes that's true <laughs> and make some open your eyes memes too we like those too well I gotta say I did quite enjoy those uh, special the legionized uh, Valentine card um, I did it <laughs> as well 
I thought the uh, the Red Hornet uh, Mari Sharp Mari Sharp Pepper was really funny. Yeah, I know. That, I really yeah. like that one too. Yeah, but of course uh, that's another uh, trending topic for today and uh, another great show. We covered a wide range of topics from um, uh, talking about crime yep. to talking about internet safety and the latest uh, Digi promotions. Yes, absolutely. So we want to say thank you to all our guests who came in today. We definitely did learn a lot, uh, but that's just about all the time we do have for today. Uh, remember, if you want to contact us, send us an email at oye at channel5bliz.com. Find us on Facebook at Open Your Eyes BZ, and you can also find us on Instagram at oyebliz. And remember to tune in tomorrow morning at 6.30 when you open your eyes. Start your morning right. Until then, keep your eyes, your mind, and your heart open. We'll see you soon. Enjoy your day, please. Open Your Eyes was brought to you by the Belize Bank. Our country, your bank.